Today on Forbes, with NIH in chaos, scientists fear Trump will hamstring critical medical research. Last Wednesday, around 1.30 p.m. Pacific Time, Esther Chu, a professor of emergency medicine at Oregon Health and Science University, got an email that the National Institutes of Health study section she was slated to sit on the next day was canceled. Within hours, as word of NIH meeting cancellations pinged across the social media platform Blue Sky, she realized that this wasn't only about the opioid research she would be reviewing, but a broader NIH research shutdown. Chu noted that there was no announcement on the NIH website. But as it became clear that the cancellation involved all stages of scientific proposals in the grants review process, the reality sunk in, and she began to gauge best case and worst case possibilities. She said, quote, We are preparing for the worst. It's very stressful, especially when your entire career or training path hinges on it. The NIH is the crown jewel of American scientific research, investing most of its $47 billion budget on medical research. Without the NIH meetings, known as study sections, the agency can't review grants and thus can't make research awards. Those funds are critically important in helping researchers study cancer, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, and opioid addiction, among numerous other health issues, and have helped fund major breakthroughs, including Moderna's development of its mRNA vaccine against COVID-19. Vaccinations against COVID-19 saved at least 14 million people from dying in the first year. Pretty much every major university or medical institution relies on federal grants to fund their research, with big recipients of NIH funding, including Johns Hopkins University, the University of Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts General Hospital. A small proportion of funds, including those from federal healthcare research institution ARPA-H, go to healthcare and biomedical startups with promising early stage research. ARPA-H had a meeting in San Francisco that was to draw more than 100 people on Thursday, but it was abruptly canceled. In the short term, the cancellation of these meetings means that some researchers who expect to receive funds in January will see those funds delayed, while others who had expected grant proposals slated to be reviewed would be subject to the challenges of rescheduling once the pause is lifted. Each review requires some two dozen researchers to meet at the same time to assess the scientific merit of proposals in their field once the pause is lifted. It's not clear if NIH grant review meetings will resume after February 1st, when the pause on federal health communications is slated to end. Longer term, researchers fear the Trump administration will use federal research funding as a cudgel to force universities and other institutions that receive it to assist in its purge of diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. The Wall Street Journal was the first to report that NIH grants would be a, quote, key lever in forcing schools such as Harvard and the University of California, San Francisco, which receive tens of millions in NIH research funding each year, to rework or drop their DEI initiatives. As word traveled among scientists about the cancellations of both NIH study sections and councils, which is the next step in a grant approval process, fear and uncertainty spread. There are at least 200 study sections each cycle, with three cycles a year, and each one can have dozens, or in certain cases, 100 different projects to review. This according to Rebecca Burdine, a professor of molecular biology at Princeton University, who has a grant pending to look at congenital heart defects in zebrafish, which is a precursor to being able to do such studies in humans. Even short delays can be a problem in scientific research, Bernine said. With zebrafish, for example, if there isn't money to keep the fish facility running, it would take a lot of time, effort, and cash to restart it. She said, quote, People are thinking, if I don't get this grant, I might have to shut this research down, and it might not ever be feasible to start it back up again. For full coverage, check out Amy Feldman's piece, on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.